Hello and welcome to episode 26. For our regular viewers you might be forgiven if there seems to be a little deja vu going on here. However about a month ago we released an episode, episode 15 to be exact, that detailed the game and watch called Fire. And here we are again reviewing another game and watch called Fire. So the first review was for the Silver Series version, while today we are focused on the widescreen variant. So relax if it feels a little too familiar, you're both safe and sane. But before we look at today's focus, I'd like to quickly answer last episode's what in the world. The question is simple. Can you identify this Nintendo item from the sliver of a photograph? Hopefully you guessed it. It was of course the 1991 issued Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This, together with a whole bunch of other Nintendo collectibles will be covered in many of my future episodes, so please stay tuned. Heading right back over to today's focus and star of our show, the widescreen version of the game and watch called Fire. Issued originally on the 4th of December back in 1981, this handheld sold an impressive 1.2 million units, and this just a year after selling a million copies of the Silver Series version. To see that episode, please follow the link in the comments below. Today's version has that brushed aluminum faceplate, anodized in rich shiny gold, coupled to a deep navy blue casing. This game and watch was a single screen, single player, that was manufactured with just two primary control buttons. Given the production code of FR27, Fire was the 7th widescreen issued and the 15th game and watch sold since the release of the initial game called, Ball. Functioning as both an alarm clock and a games unit, this version of Fire, has a colored foil overlay that the original lacked. Looking initially at game mode A, we see that the gameplay is similar to the original games, however, the wider screen, colored foil screen accents and sprites have all undergone an upgrade. In today's game we still find the apartment building ablaze, with the tenants leaping, for now only from the third floor balcony. The fire department are on scene with a rescue net, ably supported by the paramedics. Their task is to catch the falling evacuees in their net, and after bouncing several times, deliver them to the ambulance. You'll notice that every successful bounce is rewarded with a single point being scored. Like all game and watches the speed and number of items, or in this case, victims increases as the gameplay progresses. Any dropped evacuees will result in a lost life. Lose 3 lives and that's game over. If a high score is achieved, it'll be retained until the batteries are expired or removed. In game mode B, the tenants fleeing their apartment block will jump from either the second or third floor in this game mode option. Another additional level of difficulty is added because several evacuees will hesitate before actually jumping, bringing more uncertainty for our gallant firefighters. However the scoring remains unchanged, meaning, every bounce off the safety net scores a single point. The game will slow temporarily at every 100 points scored. Additionally all lost lives will be restored at 2 and 500 points. As with nearly all other game and watches the highest possible score is 999, in the event you are able to surpass that impressive milestone, the game will simply continue from the beginning once again. The high score will sadly not record your impressive achievement, so you'll need to do the math yourself and add it all up. With the cautions and screen maintenance being the same as previous models, the instructions booklet finishes up with the model's basic specifications. As previously mentioned, the game and watch called Fire has seen many variants and versions made over the years, these ones are just some that came with physical housings. The mini classic in the blister pack, along with a French version of the Silver series. Not forgetting the North America ones, by the company branded Time Out and called Fireman, issued by the toy distributors Mego. And lastly today's star of the show, the widescreen model of the game and watch called Fire, seen here. Fire also received many revisits in purely software form too. The first game and watches gallery for the original Game Boy, DMG version had a port of the game called Fire on it as a title. The game and watch gallery offered two versions of all the unlocked games. Firstly they offered a classic version, mimicking the original. And a more modern version which took greater liberties, such as new characters and challenges with the source game concept because of the higher graphic capabilities available. Taking a handheld gaming unit, docking it and playing it on the big screen, sounds very, switch, doesn't it? However back in June of 1994 the Super Game Boy could do just that on the newly released Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Costing $59.99, your game and watch gallery was now available on the big screen. With a splash of basic colors added and neat new borders blinging it all up, this method of playing the game and watch made this option the ultimate way to play back then. By the time the Game Boy Advance got established Nintendo decided to revisit the game and watch fire yet again. 
Using the proven method of putting out a classic version and a more modern variant, Nintendo ensured nostalgia drove both sales and loyalty, but ensured the new style gameplay of the modern version kept their customers entertained and happy. But even this mobile Game Boy could be docked and presented on the big screen. The Game Boy player attached under the GameCube, and allowed all but the special grey-colored Game Boy videos to be played, way back in June 2003. Making Game Boy games up to the advanced versions switchable between handheld and what is effectively a home console was awesome. In Super Smash Bros. Melee, the trophy for the character of Mr. Game and Watchfire is unlockable after all three variants of the game are played. While the Nintendo eStore offered the game and Watchfire as downloadable content for the Wii. As briefly touched upon earlier in this video, various distributors operated under several different company names and logos throughout the world, here we see the British version, called CGL. The passionate collectors in Australia received their games from a company called Futuretronics. While my dear neighbors to the south of me in the good old US of A, win hands down the competition on the most gorgeous game and watch box art ever. France had their own company too, called JI21. While in Germany the company called Trikotronic produced the German language boxes and instructions. Our joint look at these Nintendo wide screens is quickly coming to an end here, and we're hoping you've been enjoying these factual episodes, if you have I'd ask a favor and that is if you'd ever so kindly hit that like button for this episode. However coming up next is our picture quiz, which we call what in the world? In it I'd challenge you to guess what Nintendo item you're looking at, and answer in the comments section below. Or just tune in to our next episode where we'll be looking at the next exciting Nintendo game called, Turtle Bridge. So feel free to like us, follow us, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Finally I'd like to say thank you for watching, see you all shortly for what's sure to be another episode full of discovery.